All right, all right, all right. Let's do this. How's everybody doing today? Going to play some new campaign trail. Haven't played for a while. And what we'll do is we'll probably put these up for votes. So we'll come up with a couple of options each time through. And I'll let you guys vote on which uh, campaign you want me to do. And we can do some Q&A and stuff in the meantime. Well... The two teams that I watched this morning play soccer did not go very well. Uh, Wrexham lost and West Brom lost. So I have not seen Oppenheimer yet. I just haven't had a chance to go. I've uh, been pretty busy the last couple of weeks. I was in Denver last week and then I was in Minneapolis this week. So uh, between that and like my son's soccer schedule and stuff and he's got a game tonight um haven't had a chance really to do anything it is 46 today scottish mad lad thank you everybody uh, proud to share a birthday with one of my heroes and i'm wearing my i accept rachel's challenge shirt today in honor of rachel joy scott uh I, of course i speak for rachel's challenge and rachel and i share a birthday four years apart uh, another very mid-season for West Brom coming. I'm hoping that's not the case, but because like today they lost two to one, but there were probably at least two, probably three penalties that should have been called that they didn't get. So, and they were on the road. I think they're going to be okay, but we'll see. Who's a better division commander, John Bell Hood or AP Hill? That's a tough one, but I'd have to go with Hood. What have I got for my birthday? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> I have gotten in. I haven't gotten any gifts for my birthday so far. So, Who am I rooting for in the Community Shield? I don't really have a choice in that one, but I pretty much always root against Man City. So, Barbenheimer, no. I'll do Oppenheimer, but not Barbie. How was Project X? Project X could not have gone better. Uh, and I guess I can probably tell you a little bit. I can't... They've asked me not to give details, but I can tell you at least a little bit of what's going on. Pink Panther is a legend. Thank you for that. Um, SpongeBob 2008. <laughs> is that actually in there? Let's take a look. There it is. Oh, and Breaking Bad, too. I will do that. Let's do something historical first. But, yeah, we'll play that at some point. Um all right, so let, let's let's do a vote here, and then I'll tell you what I can tell you about Project X. I had the drip. Yes, thank you for that. Um, 1868 Civil War stalemate would be a fun one to do. Uh, so let me show you a couple of these. So C Civil War stalemate one is... Um, oh, I hit the wrong button. Uh, is basically a situation where McClellan won the 64 election, and now Grant is running against McClellan in 68. Um, I don't think Kissinger could run for president. Wasn't he foreign born? He wasn't a citizen at birth, was he? I'm looking that up. So he was born in Germany in 1923. Still alive, by the way. He's 100 years old. So yeah, he, uh, he was a Jewish refugee who fled. He couldn't have run for, for president. He wasn't eligible to be president. I did, yeah, Sean, I was just talking about watching the West Brom opener. So, so yeah, 1868, uh, you can play as Grant as, or as McClellan. I guess, you know, that might be a fun one to do. To, um, so let's, let's put that one in there. I've done the eight, the 1916 Wilson one before. Um, so we'll, we'll make that an option. Grant, 1868, against McClellan. Boob Swinney, thank you for that. Um, what's another good option here? We could do the uh, 1876 election. Beat Carter in 76. I think I've done that one before, too. Denali, thank you for that. All right, let's get a poll going here. So we'll do 1868 as Grant versus McClellan. So that's kind of a hypothetical one. We'll do 1872 as Tilden 
versus Hayes, which would be tough for me to run against an Ohio guy, but I'll do it. And then let's pick something from the 20th century. How about... We'll do we'll, the third option will be 1968 as now you know what I don't want to do another hypothetical I want to throw in another historical one in here Biden in 1932 um, here we'll go to the uh, we'll turn off the mod loader and we'll just look at the ones that are actually in here. Eighteen fifty two election. Is that one that was in the mod loader? It is. All right, we'll we'll add eighteen fifty two and uh let's see what the option is that I would go with in that one. I uh, screwed it up. I have to it, it's kind of finicky how you have to do this. You have to hit mod loader directly when you go to the screen, then hit submit and then hit begin. So we would go as Winfield Scott in 1852. All right, here we go. We'll put the put the vote up for you guys. Hey, Steve. Um, I want to let you know, Steve, they attempted to deliver what you sent me. It required a signature, and I wasn't home because I was in Minneapolis, so I have to run to the post office and pick it up on Monday. All right, looks like it's going to be the, the hypothetical 1868 that's going to win out, but we'll give it a few more minutes here. So, all right, while you guys are voting, let me tell you what I can tell you. Okay, so I was in Minneapolis to film my parts for a documentary that's going to be on TV. Um, what else can I say? It's going to be on a big channel on TV. And it's a kind of one of those docudramas where you watch and they're showing scenes acted out and then they intersperse that with interviews with, um, with historians talking about those things. I'm one of those people that they interviewed for that. And um, I was very happy with how it went. I was really nervous because they gave me a list of about 100 topics that we were going to be talking about. And there was a lot of very specific stuff that I wanted to make sure that I was up to speed on before I did it. Um, but it actually went really, really well. The producer was fantastic in working with me. Um, I did wear a suit and tie for that. It's going to be very, very good documentary. I'm pretty happy about it. Um, and uh, the producer told me at the end, he said that I was one of the favorite interviews he had done. They, they interviewed about 25 people for it. And he told me that I was I was one of the best. So I was I was very, very pleased to hear that. Um, when I can tell you more, I will. But I can tell you that it won't be airing until next year. So originally it was supposed to be this fall, but not until next year. So, so they're saying Grant isn't available yet for that one? So do I have to play as McClellan? Because I'm not going to do that. It shows Grant here, but that doesn't necessarily mean he's available because sometimes that happens. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah, so it's showing McKinley and Hobart. All right, so we can't do that one. Um, What country haven't I visited or plan to do that I want to go to the most? Well, right now I would say it's Austria, but I'm going there in October. So um, I don't actually know the name of the documentary. I know the topic, obviously, and I know what channel it'll be on. But I don't want to say too much because I'm not really supposed to be saying much about it. So I was asked not to. I did see Zach uh, Whiskey and Lemons on the 25th. Super excited about that. All right. So I guess we're going to be doing 72.
Because that was the, or no, 52 was the backup. That was the second place one. Who's my favorite president of all time? That would be Theodore Roosevelt. Going to be in Florence, uh, 1498 Florence. I'm going to be in Florence uh, next year in April. And you guys can go with me. We've still got seven slots available on that tour going to Florence. Uh, Rome and Florence. We actually got four spots left on the Germany-Austria one. I think there's only about a week left to sign up for that one before it closes. Why do I keep clicking on 72? Because I saw somebody say 72, that's why. We're doing 52. I haven't played this for a while, so I'm uh, fumbling my way around it. All right, so we got to go to 52, hit submit. There we go. Zach, thank you for that. I appreciate that. I'm going to be, um, I, I'm not traveling again for several weeks now. I'm home for the whole month of August, so... Um, I'm going to be getting back to recording reaction videos a day ahead. So members and patrons will all get to see those a day ahead. <laughs> JD, JD says he knows what it is. I'm going to be appearing on a Jinsu Knife infomercial on the History Channel at 2 a.m. Well, he's right about the first part. He does know what Project X is. All right, we're going to play as Winfield Scott. See if we can keep the wig party alive a little bit longer. Winfield Scott's a, a Virginian himself. Uh, so I think we might go with Edward Bates out of Missouri. Might, might be the way to go with this one. Jacob Thacker, appreciate that. Favorite lesser known U.S. conflict. Ooh, interesting. Um... I don't think nearly enough known about the Mexican-American War. I don't know if that's lesser known enough for you. Um, that one's pretty fascinating. So is the French and Indian War, which is, of course, before we were the United States. But Nico, uh, greetings in uh, München. Uh, you live in Munich. You should definitely come out and say hi when I'm in Munich in October. As we get closer to that date, I will announce kind of where we're going to be. When I'm in Munich for a couple of days, I uh, would absolutely love for you to come say hi. I'm actually flying in a day before my tour starts, um, so I'll be around that day. would love to do like a little get-together, meet-and-greet kind of thing for anybody that's in that part of Germany that would love to come and say hi. So would love the chance to meet you. I will post something about that, though, when we get closer. Tom, thank you. Um, you made the, Oh, you made the mod, the 1498 Florence mod. Very cool. Yes, that actually would be something that would be cool to do uh, leading up to the April trip to Florence. Florence is a city I don't know nearly enough about and I need to learn more about. So uh, I love that idea. Yeah, so Scott was, um, Winfield Scott was one of the commanding generals in the Mexican-American War. Winfield Scott and Zachary Taylor were kind of the two most prominent generals, but Franklin Pierce was also a general in the Mexican-American War. RIP West Brom. Any more VTH gaming content coming? Yes. Now that I'm not traveling, I can get back to recording several videos a week, which is kind of the plan. Uh, all right, so let's take a look at this, and then I'll get to some more of your questions. I do very much want to get to Poland. Vorosawa. I want to get there for sure. Um, as you learn of your nomination at the Baltimore Convention, what do you plan to emphasize in your acceptance letter? Uh, been nominated on a pro-compromise platform. Remember, this is 1852. This is the home stretch before the American Civil War. Sectarian divides are stronger than they've ever been. So compromise is probably going to be the way to go. Um, Pro-compromise platform is a thorn in our side, and a strong embrace of it will deflate the anti-compromise wing who endorsed me. I will merely accept the nomination with the resolutions annexed and emphasize my status as a war hero who can preserve national and Whig unity. We'll go with that. While your moderate patrons from the North view this as the better course, Southern Whigs are deflated by this. Your stated commitment to the integrity of the Union reassures them, but will not be enough. The Link Games, thank you. 
As a distant cousin of, cousin of Woodrow Wilson, I want to let you know I applaud your criticism. Um, so I, I can say this about Project X. I definitely got at least one dig in at Woodrow Wilson in that. Um, whether it makes it onto the documentary or not, we'll see. Because, you know, I basically spent about three hours talking for what might be six or seven minutes on the screen. Who knows? Do I plan to go to Auschwitz? Yes, I would like to go there at some point. All right, uh, so let's take a look at the map. Here's the map in 1852, and uh, pretty much everything at the moment is in favor of Franklin Pierce. So we've got a very, very much an uphill battle here. Um, we have ten. What do we have right now as far as the electoral votes go? Um, right now it's 241 to 55 in favor of Pierce. Uh, it's going to be tough. It's going to be real tough. What's the hardest campaign trail to win? Boy, I got a feel it's maybe like um, Mondale in 84 or um, beating Roosevelt in 44. How's the Jocko drink? It's great as always. I'm very proud. Thank you to JD that I got to be one of the very first people to try this particular flavor. It's the Pink Mist, and it's really good. This and the apple are my two favorites. All right, so what can we do to try and turn the tide here? Henry Clay, the longtime leader of the Whig Party, has died on June 24th. How do you plan to address his death? So a lot of people spoke out when he died. Uh, Abraham Lincoln was one of them who spoke at a memorial uh, in honor of him when he died. If Andrew Jackson was president in 1860, I mean, he was dead in 1860, but I, I assume you mean if he was alive, would he have stopped secession? No. Oh, if he was president, well, yeah, there'd be no secession in 1860 if he's president. All right, so um, I pledge my commitment to the compromise he shaped in the last years of his life. Yeah, let's go with that. The subtle embrace of the compromise will help you slightly in the South. The Whig Party mourns. Uh, it, it takes a few turns for some of these decisions to be reflected on the map, I think. Um, so we'll see. We're playing on normal difficulty here. All, all you're asking somebody else about it. Do I know if I'll have access to an uncut version of my interview? I don't believe so. Because it was actually, the way it was done was... It was kind of just a conversation, so it wasn't like they were like stopping and starting, right? So, so he would give me a prompt and and say, "Hey, could you talk about this?" And then I would give an answer, and then he might, you know, a lot of the answers he'd say that was a great answer. Let's move on to the next one, or he might say like, "Could you be a little less specific about that?" Because I tended to give like more details than they really wanted, so I would tend I would have to tend to kind of back off and maybe simplify it a little bit. Because um, the whole point is that we are doing this documentary for, for an audience that doesn't know nearly as much about these events as the people who are talking about them. So we have to kind of back off of the really heavy details in favor of more of a generalization. So sometimes he had to kind of steer me in that direction. Um, but uh, it, it was actually a really fascinating experience. And like I said, I had a great time working with the producer and he, he, he made it very easy and very comfortable. Uh, it was very warm. It was like 90 degrees in Minneapolis that day. I was wearing a suit. Couldn't have the air conditioner on, but it was, it was pretty cool. It was really cool. Um, Denali, thank you for that. I appreciate that. Uh, from the United Arab Emirates. Very cool. Um, I have a, a friend. He doesn't live there anymore, but a friend who lived in Dubai for a few years. And um, my sister actually had an opportunity to live in the UAE. She didn't go, but she works at the Cleveland Clinic in Cleveland and they, they made a Cleveland clinic in Dubai and they actually offered her a contract to go and live there for three years to get it started, but she didn't. Um, all right, let's see what we can do about this here. What do you have to say about the merits of your running mate, Edward Bates? Bates has worked for more than 30 years in favor of his fellow Missouri countrymen. We will emphasize this longtime service. Remember Winfield Scott's a general. He doesn't have, um, doesn't have political experience. And so I think it would probably be good to 
uh, focus on the political experience of my running mate. Yeah, that'll reassure a few voters co- concerned by the fact that you have never held an elective office. Okay. Um, so North Carolina is looking good for us right now. Tennessee and Kentucky, Massachusetts, but that's not nearly enough in terms of the votes. We've got to knock off a few of these bigger states like um, Pennsylvania and Ohio. I mean, that's 50 electoral votes right there. New York's 35. Um, SoCal, I I was there several years ago. I'll get that back there at some point, I think. Uh, In spite of its stated goal of bringing the Union together, the Compromise of 1850 has been tearing the Whigs apart. Northerners who nominated you are resentful of uh, Millard Fillmore's implementation of the Fugitive Slave Law, while Southerners are wary of the North drifting toward free soil positions. What is your stance on the Compromise of 1850? Spooky boy, thank you for that. O-H-I-O, baby. Hey, speaking of which, if you're a college football fan, the Big Ten added Oregon and Washington today. They're actually going to start next year uh, in the Big Ten, so that's pretty crazy. I don't know why we still call it the Big Ten. There's like 16 teams in it now. Um, but So Compromise of 1850, the, the whole history of the United States from 1787, when the uh, Constitution is adopted, up to the end of the Civil War, is really all about the issue of slavery. So many of the major political decisions that are happening have to do with slavery, have to do with compromises to keep that balance of power between the southern slave states and the northern free states. So the Compromise of 1850 uh, is going to admit California as a free state. And so for the first time, there's a shift in the balance where there's more free states than there are slave states. Up until this point, they've been admitting them at kind of the same speed. Uh, So, but in... In support of the compromise, then, they passed the Fugitive Slave Act, which the U.S. Constitution actually has a provision in it that basically protected the institution of slavery in northern states from the standpoint that if a enslaved person escaped from slavery in, say, Kentucky and got across the border into Ohio, which is a free state, Ohio still had to abide by the ownership rights of that slave owner in Kentucky. So the the Fugitive Slave Act really just enforces what's already outlined in the Constitution and basically says that there's no protection for an enslaved person who escapes to a free, slave, free state. Like there's no expectation that their rights to freedom are going to be respected, that the Ohio government would have to help a slave owner from Kentucky regain their property in that case. So uh, it was very controversial, especially in the North. When that was passed. Um, All right. So so this is a tricky issue. And looking at the map, uh, honestly, I don't know that we're going to win a lot of support in the South anyway. So maybe our best bet is to appeal to folks in the North over this issue. Um, I support the compromise, but the fugitive slave law goes too far. Um, How do people feel about that? It doesn't really say a lot on that one, but I feel like I feel like I'm going to come out against that and see what happens. Boob Swinney, thank you. Um, What country do I think has underrated history? Poland. I think Poland. Poland's got a lot of amazing history, and I don't think a lot of people know about how great their history is. Um, Fair point, or that a free black person could be just kidnapped and enslaved. That absolutely did happen. So that did open that up for that. Travis, do I think the Browns can win their division this year? I think they could. It's going to be tough. It's going to depend a lot on the quarterback play. If Deshaun Watson can be the Deshaun Watson that he was in Texas, yeah, the Browns could win it. Zach, man, I appreciate that. Uh, your, Your Astros picked up some pitching help. And uh, Guardians just can't seem to get it together, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, it, it is really cool, isn't it, Zach? And I appreciate that you've been along for all of that ride all the way back to the History Guy channel. Oh, by the way, let's talk about the History Guy for a second before I continue this, shall we? 
Um, and I say all of this in a lighthearted way, and it is not meant in any way to be a real criticism. I just find the ironic nature of this to be palpable. Uh, Johnny Lindley, thank you. It is my birthday. I'm 46 today. Um, so many of you know the story that my first YouTube channel was called The History Guy, and it was a gaming channel. It started out in December of 2016. Uh, in January of 2017, the channel that everybody knows today as The History Guy. The History Guy, history deserves to be remembered. The guy with the bow tie does a lot of different topics, does a great job, I think, has a great channel. Uh, he started his channel about a month after I started my gaming channel. Well, within about a year or two, when his channel grew really big, a lot of people started coming to my channel and saying, accusing me of uh, stealing his identity and pretending to be him, even though my channel was started first. And even though there were like six other channels called The History Guy that started before, both of our channels did. So I changed it to History Guy Gaming. And then, of course, with the popularity of vlogging through history, it's now VTH Gaming. Uh, and it's now more of a secondary channel because of this one, how much it grew. So anyway, all of that is to say, and I had a very, very friendly chat with one of his representatives because he actually trademarked the name, the history guy, but had one of his representatives reach out to me and say, hey, listen, we're going after anybody who uses the name now, but we're not coming after channels like you that have been around before this. Um, so they were very friendly about it. Everything was fine. But Many of you know that I've got this tour coming up in October where we're going to Munich, to Salzburg, to Vienna. And some of you are going on that trip. Um, so I customized the itinerary a little bit. The, the company doing the trip, they have kind of the basic itinerary for that trip already, and then you can request changes. Well, I requested a change that they didn't have listed, which was to change the Sound of Music tour in that itinerary to a tour going to Hitler's Eagle's Nest while we're in Salzburg. So they made that change. I was the first tour to do that. So I saw the other day that the history guy, that channel, is doing the exact same tour as me starting the day after mine does. So mine starts on the 11th of October. His starts on the 12th. And it's the exact same itinerary, including the change of the Sound of Music tour to Salzburg, uh, to uh, Hitler's Eagle's Nest when we're in Salzburg. So he's doing the identical tour that I'm doing starting a day after me, literally following in my footsteps. So I just thought that was really ironic considering all the accusations I got of copying off of him back in the day. So here we are. So no big deal. I hope his tour is incredibly successful and it does really well. I just thought that was really funny. Um, all right. So uh, I took the position of speaking out against the Compromise of 1850. Uh, that takes the South out of my takes the South out of my reach this fall, and is not sure that free. That's interesting. I thought. Well, yeah. I, that's right. That is what we were after. Is we were trying to. We we knew we were going to lose the South. We're trying to earn some stuff in the north, but it, I don't know if it did enough for that. So we've got 500 people here. That's awesome. Thank you all for joining on my birthday. The first thing I heard is Hitler. Being German is livid today. Oh, man. You're not too late. No, we're just getting started, Supernova. Uh, despite the fact that you have been a Whig for a long time, your policy stands are not exactly well known. To solve this, you are you have endeavored to write multiple letters stating your stances on the issue of the day. Your campaign managers, however, are wary that such letters could prove harmful to your campaign. How will you address these fears? Um, I'll give my campaign managers the right to proofread my letters before they are written. Let's do that. Such an intervention helps you avoid any blunder and your letters still publicize your views. This will be a net positive for your campaign. So that was pretty solid. House owner, thank you. Would love to catch me if I get back to Lexington. Would love to get back to Lexington. I've been to Massachusetts a couple times now and have absolutely loved it. Um, so definitely somewhere I'd like to get back to again. Made it back from the dentist, Sarah. I hope it was not too painful of an experience for you. Um, across the rivers of Canada and under the sun of Mexico, you have served the Union for more than 40 years. 
How much do you plan to emphasize this as you campaign? Uh, everyone knows about my status. We should focus on political statements on the issues of the day. Uh, yeah, I feel like people need to know that a little more. Your advisors believe you should have emphasized more this key asset. Okay, so they feel like I should have talked more about it. David Horn, thank you. You had some barbecue at the building that was once Grant's headquarters in southeast Missouri. So like right around the time of Belmont, I'm guessing. What kind of birthday cake? I don't know if I'm having a birthday cake. I don't know if anybody's making me a birthday cake today. So uh, my son has a soccer game. That's probably what I'll be doing. But if I it was up to me, probably carrot cake. Big fan of carrot cake. Uh, Pesca, thank you for that. Greetings from Serbia. Very cool. Appreciate that. Starlight. Thank you. Am I going to be in Valgrim? Not on this particular trip. No. Um, Munich, Salzburg, Vienna. Possibility of a trip next year that could involve Budapest and Prague. Working on that one right now. Got to watch Oppenheimer, Zach. Enjoy, man. Thank you so much for stopping by and for the gift, my friend. Greetings from Madison, Wisconsin. All right. Carrot cake is the best cake. That's right. What Jocko flavor am I drinking? Pink mist. Love the pink mist. It's one of my favorite. Last August, JD from the History Underground and I were in and at the Antietam Battlefield. We had a um, Airbnb together, and he got one of the first shipments of pink mist before it was even available to the public, and he let me take a couple home with me. It was good stuff. All right, so uh, we're we're getting closer in the north, but man, we're gonna have to do something to shake this up. The Whigs do not seem in a strong position this fall, to say the least. Some campaign managers feel you need to go on the attack. Would you attack Pierce on his conduct during the Mexican-American War? Remember, Franklin Pierce was a brigadier general, so this is two generals from the Mexican War running against each other in this one. Professor, what? Yeah, the Ouija board video is on my. My upcoming list for VTH Extra. I've got a list of some upcoming topics, and that's definitely one. Um, you know what? Let's go after him. Pierce has been a coward on every occasion. This will galvanize the Whig base. There we go. So hopefully we start to see a shift. We're holding on solid to North Carolina, Tennessee, and Kentucky. Uh, Virginia's close. Winfield Scott's from Virginia. Uh, we're really solid in Vermont. Franklin Pierce's home state of New Hampshire is really a no-go for us. Um, but we, we've gained a little bit, not much. Pierce was really hot, though. A lot of people consider Franklin Pierce the most attractive president we've ever had. I can't really speak to that, not being attracted to men and all, but... Um, Cameron Andrews, thank you for that. Saw Oppenheimer on open weekend. It made me realize that most of my favorite films are war films. I haven't seen it yet. I really need to get to see it. Um, it's three hours long, so it's been hard to try and find a place in my schedule that I can carve out to watch it. John Lindley, carrot cake, you're so old. Yeah, but it's so good. It really is good. Vaclav Blasek, I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. Uh, looking on your phone for our tour and found this instead. Uh, it started me first cause the dates did not match. The photo did not match. Ooh, it was surreal. Um, you found his. Okay. Uh, and by the way, I am going to be starting a new email thread for everybody on the tour because we've had a few new people that have joined. Uh, I'm waiting until they close the tour date. There's still about seven days. We've got four people, uh, four open slots for the tour right now. Um, so I'm waiting until the tour closes. Um, I think... Uh, August, September, October. when we get 60 days out, which is in about a week, they're going to close the tour for anybody else to join. Once they do that, I'm going to create a new email thread so we can start talking and hyping up the tour. We'll talk about maybe some evening plans. We're going to try to coordinate um, meeting up with guys like JD, my friend Matt Leach, who I interviewed the other day on the channel from Band of Brothers. Uh, we are going to connect with those guys, Sander. Uh, and I don't know if Sander and um, Rob are doing this tour or not, but... Greetings from Aachen, Aachen, Germany, where I got pulled over by the German police on the Autobahn. Uh, the Walker Tariff that provides low tariff rates was crafted by Democrats in 1846, and the Taylor-Fillmore administrations have left it untouched. As the union enters a new phase of economic growth, growth what is your stance on tariffs? Remember, at this time in history, the primary means of revenue for the federal government 
is tariffs. So tariffs are a huge economic issue in campaigns. Uh, let's see the states I'm trying to win, how they feel on tariffs. Support, support, support. So we need to support tariffs uh, if we want to win support in those. Um, everyone knows where the Whigs stand on tariffs issue, but it's not important as it used to be. High tariffs are necessary to the union's prosperity. Um, yeah, so I think we're going to have to go with that in order to get some votes in the north. Lauren, thank you uh, just for saying thank you, eh? <laughs> thank you, eh? Yeah, my friend Lauren in Canada, long time. You've been around, man, Lauren, since the beginning on this channel, uh, on both channels, and so I appreciate your longtime support, my friend. Tanner Mullins, my distant cousin. Thank you. I appreciate that. Ryan Boucher. Boucher, is it how I'm pronouncing that? Boucher or Boucher? Boucher, I'm guessing. Thank you for that. Both your maternal grandfather's grandparents are from Poland. You think we're from the vicinity of Krakow? I need to get to Krakow. I think Krakow is kind of the nearest big city uh, to Auschwitz. So I, I, once things calm down a little bit in that part of the world, I'll definitely get there. Uh, the stance reassures the most diehard Whigs of your commitment to the American system, but falls on deaf ears for every other American. Ugh. That didn't really help me a whole lot in the states that I'm trying to win. Catholics have become a key voting block. So these are going to be immigrants. New York's going to be big for Catholics. Um, since the famine of 1846, a lot of Irish in the Northeast, Massachusetts, they've been firmly into the Democratic fold. How should the party appeal to Catholics? Um, make several declarations supporting Catholics. Emphasize anything that could attract their support. Appreciation of their role in the Mexican-American War and the fact that my daughters were educated by Catholics. Yeah, let's do it. Let's get radical here. Nativists are dissatisfied. Uh, I'm trying. I'm trying anything here to win these votes, but it's just not happening. I'm kind of all over the place with this one. I made Mr. Beat mad with my support for tariffs. How am I doing in Rhode Island? Not great. Uh Pierce is up 5140. Pierce is from the Northeast. It's going to be tough to win those votes. Will I do a series on the Texas Revolution at some point? Yeah, absolutely. Can't win New York on normal. The anti-slavery Free Soil Party is holding its, its convention this August in Pittsburgh. And it appears that New Hampshire Senator John Parker Hale will be nominated. Whig strategists such as Thurlow Weed and Skylar Colfax... Uh, who will go on to be vice president under Grant after he is uh, Speaker of the House during the Civil War, have advocated in favor of a convincing Hale to refuse the nomination, which would give it to Sam and Chase of Ohio, who is an anathema to most Whigs and would prevent any bolt of your voters in his favor. Should we pr pursue this? Uh, yeah, let's let's try that. Fearing that being associated with his campaign will hurt Scott's candidacy. Seward refuses to meet with Hale and stays in New York. Hale gets nominated, but his speeches in Ohio and Michigan will help split the vote in your favor there. Okay. Han, Han, Han. Thank you. Appreciate that. Tell Pierce to stay away from trains. Amen to that. Franklin Pierce, right before he takes the oath of office, is very famously his family's in a train accident, and uh, it kills his son, who is basically decapitated in front of him it's it's pretty awful uh what happens and pierce's wife will blame him being elected she thought that like he should not be president and she will blame him being elected president for that happening to their son it's pretty 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 rough stuff um all right so ohio still six points michigan six points not really gaining any ground here so pick the uh, naturalization laws as they stand. Um, all right, we'll go with that. That can be what rallies immigrants to your candidacy at the cost of your nativist electorate. Eh, Ohio just turned back against me on that one. Yeah, this is not going well. I'm kind of all over the place here. There's probably a very narrow way in which to win this election, and I'm not, not doing that at the moment. Nativists opposed to foreign immigration, especially Catholic, have been firmly in our column for a decade. The situation's starting to change. What should our party do to calm this upheaval among nativist ranks? Uh, 
Um, make support. Yeah, we'll try to do this. The main laws are something supported by those with the nativist outlook. While it is still opposed by immigrants, at least you did not make a direct statement. I'm kind of being wishy-washy here, but it is, I think, maybe going to stem the tide a little bit. You can win this mod on easy if you just pick moderate middle answers every time, yeah. I don't like doing it on easy, though. I like to try and, you know, go for the challenge a little bit. It's fun to stay at the O-H-I-O. Nice. Pierce's statements on slavery give us an opportunity to attack. Back in January, he told an audience in New Hampshire that he found the fugitive slave law inhumane. How will you try to use these statements? Well, the problem is I'm trying to win northern votes. Um... Keep the attack in southern newspapers. Many northern Whigs do agree with him. Um, I agree. I do. I too find this law inhumane. I'll say that. Yeah. But see, I'm trying to win in the north. So, all right. Five percent right now. Flores official. Thank you. Have I heard of the Battle of Weiss Fork in New, New North Carolina? I have not. But I'll look into that. Thank you for bringing that to my attention. Ryan, it's it pronounced like voucher. Okay, Ryan Voucher. Got it. I will remember that now. Thank you, Ryan. An ancestor who lived in Alsace-Lorraine region in France in the mid-1700s. Very cool. Um, going to that region, going to be going back there in November with my friends um, Sander and Marcel and uh, Rob. And uh, I'm going to be doing some stuff in Verdun as well as uh, Amuse Argonne series. Uh, and there's a very important reason why I want to do a Muse Argonne series. And that's all I'll say about that. Turtles for the win. Thank you. A video about who I should think should be on the USA currency. Really interesting topic. I like that idea because I mentioned the other day about how much I'd like to see us put some new faces on some of the currency. Maybe even like do different ones, like rotate it every so often. I think it would be very cool to do that. We've got a lot of great Americans that we could be putting on our money. I do like the idea of Harriet Tubman, Harriet Tubman on the 20, though. Uh, Democratic Representative Andrew Johnson from Tennessee, foreshadowing there, has been advocating for a homestead bill in the House, which would provide for cheap land grants to those who want to migrate to the territories. Uh, and that's a bill that will end up being passed by Abraham Lincoln during the Civil War, the Homestead Act. Uh, it has, however, been opposed by lawmakers from the South who view it as a threat to slaveholding interests why is that a threat? Because spreading to new states mean the opportunity for new free states that could shift the balance of power, and that's why it's an issue. Um, I've never been to Quebec City. I've never been to Quebec. I've only ever been in Toronto in Canada. Freddie D. on a bill, Supernova. I'd, be, I'd love to see Frederick Douglass on some currency. Um, I oppose this idea. Um... I don't know, though, because I'm appealing to the north. Ah, boy, this is a tough one. John Brown on the 100. I don't think that's going to happen. Don't be that guy. Thank you. Can still register to run for 2024. <laughs> no, I have no interest in being president of the United States. Sacred assault. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm going to speak out in favor of the homesteads. Johnson is pleased that northern voters are too. The South, not so much. I don't see, I'm not going to win the South. I'm trying to win the North. So, anything I can do to shift them my way. Put VTH on the 20. I will say this, and I said this in the chat earlier without giving too much away. Um, I did at least get in one statement as a dig on Woodrow Wilson in my interview th for the documentary that I'm a part of. So there's that. And I was told that at least one of the other experts that was interviewed for the documentary said something to the effect of Woodrow Wilson was a, what was the term they used? Was a rabid racist. And of course, that's not going to appear in the documentary. But I was proud of whoever that was that said that. Would I ever run for local office in Ohio? Hey, believe it or not, I actually have won a local election, but I never got to serve because I moved out of the district right around the time that I won. I actually got elected to the school board when I lived in Pennsylvania, uh, but then never got to serve because I moved right around the time of the election. 
Um, okay, your campaign has been marked by an, in, uh, an important innovation. Your campaign headquarters is based in Washington, D.C. have been ex- able to successfully coordinate with statewide WIGs and efficiently display, dispatch pamphlets there. It's kind of a new thing, right? Kind of a grassroots campaign. What pamphlets should be distributed the most? Um, publishing my biography in German? Hmm, interesting. That's actually not a bad idea. A lot of German immigrants in the Midwest where I'm trying to get some votes. Let's do that. Germans are beginning to form a key constituency in the West. This will help there. We're within four points in Ohio. Yeah, just can't seem to get close enough, though. Henry Clay on the dollar um, would be interesting, but I'm not sure if we could get a Southerner on money right now. I am uh, pretty happy with, for the most part, with the name changes to U.S. bases. They changed all the names of all the ones that were named after Confederate generals, which, while I'm not quite the tear down every statue in the, in the country guy, I'm kind of a mixed bag on that one, depending on the statue. I was totally in favor of changing the names of the forts. So I like the fact that, for example, Henry Johnson got a fort named after him. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, Hal Moore got a stat, got a fort. That was that was a good one too. I think. Anthony Moore, thank you. you. Just got back from France. Went to Paris, Dunkirk, and Nice. Very cool. Uh, Lamino's video on Flight 307. Yeah, I think we'll probably tackle that one at some point. Those videos are all really well done, and they seem to be pretty popular. Mr. Terry, thank you, sir. Appreciate that. Looking forward to our next uh, live stream. I'll have to touch. I'll send you a text later on today, and we'll start talking about dates for when we can do that next live stream. Uh, your running mate has come under attack from Democrat newspapers. They point at a freedom suit for which Bates argued in favor of a former slave and attack him as an abolitionist. Um, the convictions of my running mate are not mine, and I do not intend to fight against slavery. You know what? I'll stay silent on that one. Yeah. He de- de- Woodrow Wilson de- belongs on a minus $12 bill. True, he wasn't your typical Southerner. That's fair. McClellan will not be on any money anytime soon. Uh, so one thing I probably will do a video about at some point is I've always been fascinated by the like descendants of famous people and where they ended up. Like I've got plans to do a video on like living descendants of presidents and what they're doing, but there's a lot of other fascinating ones too. Like um, I've mentioned before, for example, that Nathan Bedford Forrest had, I think a grandson or a great grandson who was shot down during world war II, as was the grandson of Stonewall Jackson or great grandson. Um, General Pershing, had a grandson who was a second lieutenant who was killed in Vietnam. Uh, so that kind of stuff I always thought was really interesting. His, his grandson killed in Vietnam was actually buried next to him at Arlington. Was McClellan a decent commander? No. No, 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 he was not. Some Whig strategists believe that a good way to come back against the Democrats would be to break their hold over the Catholic vote. Will I attack Pierce as anti-Catholic? Yes, we will. He tries to explain his position, which will reduce damage. It still hurts him and will help you overall, despite the protest of nativists. All right, Ohio's still 4%. New York's still 5%. We're just not getting any closer. Those are both places that support immigration, uh, support tariffs. So that's kind of what we have to do. Cypher is not a descendant of Patton. I know him. He's not a descendant of Patton. He might be like distantly related to Patton, but he's not a descendant of Patton. Uh, The moralist crusade for alcohol prohibition has been gaining ground in New England. Um, I don't think prohibition is going to be a big issue for us. I think we'll stay out of that one. It's a divisive issue. 
Better commander, Hooker or Burnside? Ooh, I'd probably have to go with Hooker. Burnside wasn't bad, though. He really wasn't. I think you're probably just thinking of Cypher being maybe related to Patton because he has Patton in his name. So there might be some like distant connection somewhere. Oh, I'm sure I know whose statue stands in front of the Prague main station, and I will find that if I go to Prague next year as I'm planning. I don't know of any history YouTubers that are direct that are a descendant of Patton, because that would be like a pretty big deal, because they'd have to be like a great grandson if they're a descendant. Killer Six, thank you, appreciate that. You're a distant relative of Elvis Presley? I think I am too. I'm like a fifth or sixth cousin or something. Is Hooker Turtle Snap McGee? No. Snapping Turtle McGee is Meade, who was one of the best generals of the war. Um, okay. Uh, Renegade Congressman Thomas Klingman from North Carolina's first district just endorsed Pierce. His sway over his key district might just be what flips North Carolina. I think, I, yeah, I mean, it's pretty close, but I feel, I feel like I'm okay. Um, Diverting, and I'm not going to divert more funding into his state. Denounce him as a traitor. I'm not too worried about losing. Well, North Carolina is getting close, but honestly, I, I'm not going to win anyway. So, <laughs> Anthony Moore, thank you. Top five historical figures. Wow, that's a big list. I'd probably have Napoleon in there, Julius Caesar. Napoleon too short to be top five. Wow. Ouch. Ouch. What historical figure has the best nickname? Name. Um, I don't know. Somebody throw up some ideas and remind me. I don't think Nathaniel Lyon would have been a good commander. No, he had a bit of a Napoleon complex himself. He, he wanted to set himself up as a dictator in Missouri. I don't think he was going to do much. Jerry Ford. Thank you. What is the Arnold Amendment? I'm not familiar with that one. Hungarian revolutionary Louis Kossuth uh, arrived on American shores in December of 51 and has since engaged on a speaking tour that gave him great popularity. Uh, while he's massively popular in, the, popular in the East Coast and among German immigrants, his radical appeals for political liberty and American intervention in Europe worry Southerners. Um... I don't think people would be in favor of intervention. We could explain and defend Fillmore's position. You're faithful to your party's policies, even when they happen to be unpopular. South appreciate this, but Northerners and immigrants are dissatisfied. I can't win with anybody. Like, I'm just all over the place. Napoleon was like four foot five. Um, yeah, Helen Patton does have some TED Talks on YouTube. I, lo I love her. She's great. She's uh, Patton's grand granddaughter. You oh yeah, uh, you know who is a great figure is um, Admiral Yi, is a good one, historical figure. Old blood and gut since we got a lot of Patton talk going. The Lion from the North is a good one. Yeah, Hammer of the Scots is pretty good for Edward the First. Even though I. Uh, I'm definitely a lover of all things Scotland. Best Civil War song, Battle Hymn of the Republic. The Iron Chancellor is a good one for Otto von Bismarck. He's a fascinating guy. After his defeat at the Baltimore Convention, Daniel Webster refused to endorse you, and although unable to actively campaign, was nominated by the Union Party. He's been urging his friends to vote for Pierce. How do I bring them back? Emphasize our nativist viewpoint. Uh, I guess we'll have to try that. See if we can't swing people back our way. We just can't get Ohio closer than 4%. Timur the lame. Timur lane, yeah. The king, Richard Petty. A lot of people get the king, though. Ethel read the unready, even though it really didn't mean that, but it kind of came down. Stonewall Jackson's a pretty good one. The leper king, that's is that Baldwin the fourth that we're talking about, the leper king? Because I know he had leprosy. Uh, 
Eisenhower with MacArthur as his running mate. Oh, I don't know if Eisenhower would have ever picked MacArthur as his running mate. He was not a fan of MacArthur, if I remember right. Your campaign managers felt they needed to do something truly special. Thanks to Fillmore's support, you had to Blue Lick Springs, Kentucky, uh, to examine the site for a possible construction of a home for aging Army veterans. This is kind of cool because my nearest direct ancestor who actually died in a war died at the Battle of Blue Licks, Kentucky, at the end of the Revolution. So kind of cool. Thank you, Randall. Thank you, Anthony. Um, playing Assassin's Creed. I was actually watching a, vidder, a video of Assassin's Creed, uh, scene, Assassin's Creed scenes with Napoleon the other day. I might actually consider that. I get, I get asked that a lot and kind of talk about the characters that you're encountering while you're going. Ivar the Boneless is a good one, too. Um I will partake in the trip, but only act in the way the managers tell me to. You avoid many of the embarrassments that could have come from your personal campaigning, and most call your trip a resounding success. But yeah, with two questions to go, we are just not going to win. Um, we'll support states' rights on this one. Yeah, we're not going to win. Doesn't matter what I do at this point. Support a national bank. And we'll campaign in New York, but nothing nothing good going to come of this election. It was bad. It was really, really bad. I was really all over the place. I don't know enough about what was going on in the details of this election to maybe change history. If I visit any West Coast shoreline of Europe from World War II other than Normandy, I have not. Charles Martel knocking out fools with an oversized video game style Warhammer. Nice. Um, opinion of Douglas MacArthur. I'm not a huge fan of MacArthur. Actually, I was just talking about him in my uh, documentary interview the other day, if that gives you any clues. Never, never been a huge fan of him, though. Yeah, I lost the election. 152 to, or 157. Uh, we're up to 55 votes. Pretty much won the states that we started out with. So Assassin's Creed Three covers the American Revolution and Unity covers the French Revolution. Those would be two very cool ones to do and probably the ones I would want to start with. And thank you for that, Anthony. Ooh, we won Delaware. I got 55 votes. And that's what I... Oh, I ended up with 61. What did I win? Uh, Louisiana. Okay. Yeah, not great. Not great at all. So that could not have gone worse, really. Fourteen ninety Florence. If you want to mod with a lot of historical value, I, I feel like I would. I need to learn a little bit about that first. I will definitely do it, but I want to learn something about that historical time period before we get into it. So, what shall we do next? Grant versus Lee in 68, is that even a thing? I don't think that's a thing you can do on here. SpongeBob 2008, yeah, I was asked to do that one, wasn't I? All right, I have no idea what we're getting into with this. I really don't have a clue. Four weeks later... Oh my gosh, this is hilarious. I you, I don't think you guys can hear the music because of my sound settings, but there's definitely music playing. You might hear it picking up a little bit from the microphone, but... All right. Warning. Vulgar language and suicidal themes. All right, you have been warned, everyone. Wow. Wow, what did I just get myself into? All right, who do I get to... P <laughs> the theme song's playing. I'm going to turn the music down so I don't get demonetized. Franklin was, in fact, our greatest president, Mr. Terry says. Okay, um, 
I have to play a Squidward. I have to play a Squidward. He's my favorite character. Do I need to talk like this the entire time that I'm playing, though? I don't think I could stand to do that. But I do love me some Squidward, so I love I love it. I love it. Let me just check, make sure I don't have any messages here. All right, here we go. New campaign trail. All right. Uh, Squidward Tentacles, Republican from Missouri. Despite being a nobody and being critical of the Bush administration on a significant amount of issues, Squidward Tentacles won the GOP nomination just after barely edging out John McCain and Mitt Romney. Squidward works at the same fast food rest restaurant as his Democratic opponent as a cashier and is deeply entrenched with the arts. All right. Who's my running mate going to be? Plankton, who's a Republican from Illinois. Sponge bong hemp pants. What, what is happening right now? Kelpie G, who's an independent from California. That might not be bad. I could use the California vote. Eugene Krabs from Florida. We might go with Kelpie G. All right, you know what? We're going to put this up for a vote. So I'm going to I'm going to create the poll and then I'm going to show you guys the choices here. Oh, we got to end the previous poll first. There we go. All right, this is a poll for running mate and it's going to be between Eugene Krabs, kind of a play on Eugene Krebs there. Sheldon Plankton, Kelpie G. I'm so afraid you guys are all going to choose Sponge Bong Hemp Pants just because of the name. Here we go. Anthony, it might be too dark to ask, but what is your prediction of the outcome of the Russo-Ukraine invasion? I think in the end, probably a status quo is most likely. Russia pulls out. Borders stay as they are. But we'll see. Who's my favorite sports team? I've got a few, but West Bromwich Albion is probably the one I follow the most. Okay. What's the vote? Oh, man, it's close between Eugene Krabs and... Oh, I got to show you these. So Eugene Krabs is a Republican out of Florida. Uh, so it would obviously help me with the Florida vote. Sheldon Plankton, Republican from Illinois. He's a scientist known for trying to steal the Krabby Patty secret formula. Kelpie G is an independent from California. He's a ripoff of Kenny G. His lack of experience would complicate matters. And then Sponge Bong Hemp Pants from California. Oh, my gosh. A lot of F words on that one. Matt Ryan, thank you for the happy birthday wishes. So how this game works is basically you're going to be making decisions on how you campaign based on the issues, and then you hope you can win the election. Yes, the, vo the guy who voices Mr. Crab is indeed that head guard in Shawshank Redemption, and the guy who voices Patrick is uh, Dauber from Coach. If you remember the show, Coach. Squidward dies and Spongebong becomes president. West Brom's transfer window. They've had a... Considering they... It's the first time in 20 years that they don't have Premier League money or parachute payments coming their way. They're hopefully going to get sold. I really hope somebody buys the team and puts some money into it. Um, so considering what they were facing, I think they've done okay. I think the two additions they made recently are going to help in the long run. So we'll see. I have never visited the Hall of Fame. My son's been there, but I haven't. I've been at the Hall of Fame. My, my middle child has had some soccer tournaments at the Hall of Fame. Uh, so it looks like it is going to be Eugene Krabs as our running mate. Republican out of Florida. All right, here we go. Here's the electoral map. And it looks good to start. 
So the vote right now, uh, it's actually a multiple person race at the moment. So electoral vote estimate is pretty close between Squidward and SpongeBob. Clancy Brown is in everything. Yeah, he is. All right, here we go. Congratulations, you've won the Republican nomination for president in a massive shocker despite your lack of experience and name recognition in your fairly anti-Bush campaign. What will you say in your acceptance speech? I'm not going to read all these because they're really long, but um, I think we don't need to pivot more conservative now because you, you would tend to lean more conservative in your fight for the nomination, but now you got to kind of come back more to the middle to win the election. Um, outsider populist credentials, opposition to some of President Bush's conduct and actions while in office, Mention how I'm a people's man who has lived life and fought many of the struggles most Americans uh, face on, or face head on. Let's do that. Bush's approval rating is in the deep red. There's not much to lose by distancing yourself from him. A lot of presidents who win re-election have low approval in their second, second term. That's not a particularly unusual thing. Annie, you saw the Hall of Fame back in 74. It's one of those things, you know, like, because I live so close to it, less than an hour away. I guess you take it for granted. We love you, Clancy, if you're watching this. Yeah, Clancy, he's fantastic. All right, so does that help us? Ohio's super close right now. You know I live in Ohio, so I have to campaign hard here. We've got to try and win Pennsylvania, too, though. Uh, I think uh, if we can switch Pennsylvania and hold on to everything else, that's already red, that's enough to win it all. So I don't know why there's a timer on there. Will Jack the River mystery, mystery ever be solved? No, I don't think so. I don't think um, there's anything new we're going to be able to discover that's going to conclusively solve that. For your running mate, you chose GOP mega donor and your very own boss, Eugene Krabs. Behind the scenes, you and Krabs have a very shaky relationship at a significant amount of the time. And Krabs has been in controversies over the years for his business practices and his support for the Iraq war. What do you have to say about it? He's the epitome of the American dream. He grew up in complete poverty with nothing to his name and clothes. That's why he's so cheap. Um, through hard work and dedication, he became successful. We'll do that. Trying to humanize crabs to the American people may seem like just pounding your skull on a concrete wall, but for the moment it feels it, it at least succeeds, especially among moderates looking for a feel-good story during a time of darkness. All right, that solidified us in the South, it appears. Zodiac Killer, I think, can be solved, yeah. D.B. Cooper's possible, too. I knew crabs was a hawk. <laughs> All right, we're going to visit a state. Let's go to Pennsylvania. We're down 3% there. That's a state we could win. Watchers puppet history. That might be interesting. Um, okay. People have questioned your more, let's just say, nasty and snobbish personality of, as of late. Polls as of late see your opponents as more likable than you by a wide margin. <laughs> yeah, I know SpongeBob's likable. Uh, I have more important things than convincing those morons that I'm wanting one of their own now. Um, we'll talk at great lengths about how those two are some of the most immature people that I've ever had the pleasure to meet. Can you trust them to deal with Putin in meetings? What about Lula? NATO? I'm a responsible adult who actually treat the role as president with the respect that it deserves. Yes, that's what we'll do. It was Loki. Hey, I got to say, of all of the... You know, we've got all of these like Marvel and Star Wars series that are out right now. Loki's one of the best. I thought Loki was really, really good. My favorite Lamino so far is probably still Jack the Ripper, just because I'm so fascinated by that case already. His presentation of it was, was fantastic. I think there is a Frank Underwood version of this game. That would be pretty cool to do. More can candidates don't visit the Dakotas or Montana, A, because they pretty well 
always vote one way, although I think Montana's for the right candidate could go Democrat, but they're pretty solidly red. Um, but also there are only three electoral votes. They're just not really, it's not worth it for candidates, unfortunately. Um, although your aggressive and condescending tone may cost you, should you overplay your hand, this for the moment hits the sweet spot in regards to your point. All right. So I think that worked out pretty well. We haven't quite shifted Pennsylvania yet, but we're doing all right so far, I think, in that regard. We just need to shift a little bit more of those votes my way. Montana has four now? Oh, yeah, with the changes in the electoral vote. I guess they do. I love Montana. It's a beautiful state. Love the Dakotas, too. Um, all right, back to the game. During the primaries, you set yourself apart from your opponent, uh, or for, from your opposition to the Iraq war. However, many neocons in your party have been very suspicious of your candidacy up to this point, with some straight up refusing to endorse you. SpongeBob has also questioned your stances now that you are the nominee. Will you clarify your positions on the conduct of the war? I think probably the way to go here, if there's an option, is basically support the troops, but maybe not necessarily the conduct of the war. Um, if those two-faced neocons want us to stay in Iraq, fine, but the deadline will be, I'm not going to do a deadline though. I don't like the idea of a deadline. I may not see eye to eye with Bush and his factions of neocons, but my running mate does. Why not send him instead? Um, uh, yeah, we'll do that. Thankfully for you, Krabs is successful at getting his fellow neocons on board, at least for now. Don't ruin his dealing during the campaign, though. All right, all right. Scissor Inc., thank you for that. 88 or in Contra or 1936, no Lusitania. Interesting. Very cool. Simple Jack, thank you for that. Send Krabs. Him and Cheney are like bread and butter. Yes. I tabbed out for 10 minutes and come back to VTH, saving the soul of Bikini Bottom. That one historian, how you doing, my friend? We are going to collab at some point. I'll touch base with you, and we'll figure out when we can do that. When can I learn more about the New York draft riots? Interesting. Yeah, um, we should probably talk about that sometime. I haven't seen Flight 370 of Lumino yet. All right, I think Pennsylvania is a place we're going to spend some more time. Recently, reports have come out of the L.A. Times of your running mate, Mr. Krabs, being involved in unlawfully and unethically mistreating your empl employees, including yourself. The report also alleges that Krabs provided an unsafe work conditions and inadequate pay for his employees. Um, let's see. Considering the only other person that has worked for Krabs other than myself for decades is SpongeBob, who would never talk bad about Eugene, let's just say the rumors are complete bunk and Krabs is totally innocent, despite that being a complete load of barnacles. Thankfully for you, twisting the knife is necessary in presidential politics, so taking advantage of SpongeBob's loyalty works out. People are still suspicious of Krabs, but it's not a deal breaker or anything. All right, Pennsylvania is down to 1%. If I ever put on a PSV kit, you're going to unsub. But it's funny you mention that because I, I have this tradition of when I go to Europe trying to pick up a jersey for my sons uh, for whatever city I'm in. And when I was in Eindhoven, I almost got, because I drove past their stadium, I almost got them an Eindhoven kit, but I was talked into getting an Ajax jersey and said for each of them. Brigham Young... I don't know a lot about Brigham Young, but what I know of him has not been very favorable. But I, I don't know enough to really say for sure. Reports have come out recently of a recent incident where SpongeBob apparently brutally massacred a bed of clams in order to protect a Krabby Patty he was in a romantic relationship with. This could be a big break for your campaign. How will you respond? Um... I, to get back to what you said, though, Scissor, I, I do want to do some Mormon history at some point. So that'll give us a chance to dive into that a little more. Stefan Beck, thank you for that. Get them an IX kit. They won't need a new one for the rest of their lives. 
Did I pick my team in Germany? No, I haven't. I'm still open to that one. I'm really tempted to go with Hoffenheim, though, but I know a lot of Germans would not like me if I did that. Uh, okay. So how do people th- feel about some of these issues? Um, we're not really talking about any of those right now. We won't do anything. Just let him shoot himself in the foot. Let's do that. You could have twisted a knife a bit in regards to the scandal, but there's nothing wrong with letting SpongeBob, with his soft personality and inexperience on camera, crumble under the pressure. You gain in support as a result. However, Patrick is rising as well and at rapid speed, too. Whoa! Whoa! What just happened to the map? We are suddenly way ahead in the Electoral College with Patrick in second now. Neither one of us has enough to win. It would go to the House of Representatives in this case. Union Berlin, Hertha Berlin, 1860 Munich. These are all, you know, maybe Munich since I'm going to be going to Munich. I did not have sexual relations with that patty. SpongeBob, probably. (laughs) That's awesome. Okay, my favorite episode of SpongeBob by far is the he was number one. The one where Smitty Werben Jaeger Man Jensen. Oh, it's it's hilarious, that one. I love SpongeBob. One of my favorite cartoons. Kanye West, uh, he just needs to fade off into the sunset and never speak publicly again. All right, so the, the whole election just got upended here. Ah. Uh, California is winnable. Let's go to California. As the campaign campaign progresses, you start to get the urge to show off your artistic abilities, ranging from painting to sculpting to contemporary dance to your prized clarinet. However, many in your inner circle advise against showing off your Swiss knife of talents and fear of them being lambasted by the public. What will you do to combat these claims? My... My advisors may be right. Bikini bottomites are complete dweebs who hate anything resembling culture. Um, yeah, let's beat them on, on policy. This may be one of the more crucial decisions of this election. Should you lose, there will be discussion on whether or not your discretion on showing off your talents played a major part in your loss. Regardless, this is a safe move on your part. All right, all right, all right. Still at 258. Anthony, thank you for that. Developers of Assassin's Creed have said multiple times they can't see making a World War II game. Um, I don't know. I think it would be fun. But I get why they say that because they tend to set it in a earlier time period. Alex, thank you for that. I appreciate that. Am I suggesting that Kanye goes west? Yes, please. Um, Okay, pretty solid in the south still. Your strong internet presence and grassroots effort, especially compared to your opponents, were vital to you securing the nomination. As the campaign progresses, many advisors in your camp are suggesting that you continue to focus on social media, especially as SpongeBob seems to rely on television ads for the meantime. Note that Patrick is doubling down on the internet. How will you respond to this growing medium of political advertising? Um... Yeah, absolutely. Keep going with the internet. We'll make well-crafted advertisements on YouTube, Facebook, and MySpace. Remember MySpace. Some of you probably don't. Uh, It will probably smoke Patrick's efforts in comparison. Why fix what's not broken? This is strange for a Republican candidate to do, but it worked for you in the primary, and it should help you here. Keep in mind your insecure position among older and rural voters, however. All right, all right. We're still at 258. Be nice to get California. We're going to go back there. MySpace. What's a MySpace? Bad news, Squiddy. Reports are starting to swirl in, uh, swirl in about investment firms, Lehman Roberts, filing what looks to be the largest bankruptcy. So this was a big deal during this election, right? The bailouts that happened right at the end of the Bush administration into the beginning of the Obama administration. Um, With economy already in a precarious position since last year, many have blamed President Bush and the GOP as a whole for this turn in fortune. 
Um, so we have to distance ourselves from Bush here. Support a stimulus. Yeah, I think we'll support the stimulus. People want swift and strong action on the economy as soon as humanly possible. However, you pick up voters who are bipartisan-minded at least. All right, well, we lost California big time there. Um, now SpongeBob is back in the lead of all things. Boy, that shifted in a hurry. we got to get Ohio back. Greg uh, in Des Moines. Love Iowa. I've been to Iowa many times. I want to get back there sometime. Gunpowder fantasy. Yes, I'm a little bit familiar with it. If I could time travel, what historical event would I travel back in time to witness? Ooh, interesting. There's so many choices. Right now, I think what I would probably say, oh boy. The Battle of Bosworth in 1485, from a safe distance. Opinion on King Charles? I think Charles has done a good job so far. I think he's stepped in the role, into the role nicely. Uh, your running mate, Mr. Krabs, proposed an idea to start secretly slashing the salaries of your campaign workers, as well as get money from nefarious means. No, we're not going to do that. I understand you're the biggest skin flint I have ever known, but this would kill my campaign. Uh, yeah. Krabs berates you for being a sissy, but this was probably for the best, to be honest. Um, all right, we are we are losing to SpongeBob now. Things are really just all over the place in this election. We'll probably do some Filipino history at some point. Battle of Hastings would be interesting. Some person, that would be a good one, too. All right, what are we going to do here? We're going to go to Ohio. Many of your campaign advisors have identified your opponent's clear lack of maturity and competency as a major sore point for their campaigns. We should definitely hit them on that. These suckers will not expect this barrage of attacks. I don't know if I'll go that hard. I don't want to come off as a slob and an elitist. Although seating on the maturity issue is a risk for the campaign, people generally like the new Squidward as of late, surprisingly. Voters are also shocked to learn you indeed laugh at certain points. <laughs> wow. This election is nuts. Three point, or 30 po uh, electoral votes now. Topic of health care has come up in recent months. It's been estimated over 100 million Americans haven't had insurance at some point in the past year, as most Americans believe that the health care system needs major reform. What's your plan for making health care more affordable? Uh, making a pro-gamer move, as the kids say, and outflank my opponents on this issue. Uh, the states we want to win, they talk about expanding coverage. I think expanding coverage is probably going to be the way to go to win the people that we want. Yeah, we'll expand coverage, but in a bipartisan way. Negotiate with drug companies to lower drug uh, prices. You're in an extremely touchy situation with regards to health care, but this is probably the best answer you could give. Folks still prefer SpongeBob's plan to yours, however. Ah, this is tough. Plankton is one of the possible running, running mates. Should have taken the dirty money, huh? Do I have a take on if the pending litigation regarding a former president will set a precedent for future oversight? Oh, absolutely, it's going to. Um, I think anytime this stuff happens, whether it's legit or not, it's going to set a precedent. Um, all right, we're going back to Ohio. For the first time since Ross Perot, a third-party independent candidate has gained significant traction. To your shock and horror, it comes in the form of your former or of your neighbor, Patrick Starr. Um, Patrick has no idea what Canada is, let alone how to fix our economy and international crises. He does not have the intelligence or competence to lead us out of dark times. Um, yeah, we'll go with that. 
Many Patrick leaners start to reconsider their vote, but in an off-the-cuff remark to one of his supporters, you called Patrick and his fans dumb. <laughs> What's worse is it was filmed. Okay. Ouch. That hurt. That hurt us bad. Texas is on the ropes now. Ohio is leaning away from us. My goodness. Tour in 732 would be an interesting one. Favorite cartoon of all time. Oh, this is going to maybe come across as a little controversial for me to say, but family guy. Your aunt, Aragon, thank you for that, is the Kansas leg legislator house minority whip. I do want to play Victoria 3. It's a, uh, it's a complicated game, and I do have the game. I, I would like to play it at some point for the channel. If you believe, all right, so first debates are rapidly coming around the corner and have certainly gotten a lot of attention from your opponent's campaigns. Considering a good performance may be key to turning this campaign around, will I attend? Yes, I will, but who knows which of these choices is going to help me. The debate had no conclusive answer, but everyone involved talking over each other for most of the duration. And that, my friends, is absolutely why I don't watch presidential debates. I can't stand the petty talking over each other and fighting for time. It accomplishes nothing and it would do nothing to change my vote anyway. I don't watch the debates. I just, I can't stand them. I really can't. Do I think Trump's going to win in 2024? No, I do not. All right, so that did nothing for us. We're still within striking distance of winning this thing, though. We're going to have to flip a couple of states. EU4, I have done a little bit of it on my channel back in the past. What historic site have I visited that was the biggest letdown? I would probably say the Alamo, even though I had already been warned that it would be a letdown, so I kind of expected it to be. But there's just really not a lot there for such a, a consequential and famous historic site. There's not a lot there. Um, there's a lot of sites that aren't preserved as well as I wish they were. If you go to the site where William McKinley was assassinated, it's a little rock in the middle of a residential neighborhood and there's just really not much to it. So there's kind of that kind of thing. Um, after that debate, a new scandal has come out that Patrick has been soliciting and even robbing at times for almost four years now. Um, don't go too overboard with it. Let let that kind of just happen. As a result of the scandal, Patrick's numbers have fallen back to earth as both you and SpongeBob gain in support. All right. Ugh. I'm getting destroyed in Ohio now. Oh, my gosh. SpongeBob's just running away with this right now. I've done, I've done Crusader Kings 3, a couple of series on my channel. Oh, DeSantis can win in the Rust Belt. He, he would definitely win here. He, he would beat Biden in Ohio. I don't know that DeSantis is going to be the nominee, though. Recently, the subject of Israel and Palestine has been brought into the limelight again. Older and more nationalistic Jews, as well as evangelicals in particular, are suspicious of your position on the issue. What will you do? All right. Jewish vote is essential for Ohio, for example, um, as a Republican especially. So uh, that's one we definitely have to speak out in favor of. Yeah, we're going to go hardcore in favor of the Jewish vote. It helped us a little bit in Florida, got us a little closer, but not real strong. Um, Anthony, thank you. You love France when you went a week ago. What is the next country in Europe you should visit? You want rich history? Um, I would say Germany. Germany's fantastic for that. I haven't been in a lot of Germany yet. Germany, Italy, great history. The UK is fantastic for that too. UK is probably my favorite. Michael, I think you're probably right. The Republicans' best chance is to run anyone but Trump or DeSantis. Whether that'll happen or not, I don't know. But I think I think I would agree with you that they would be much safer to nominate Tim Scott, Nikki Haley, 
even if Youngkin, the governor of Virginia, got in, I think he'd be a really solid choice for the Republicans. Um, all right, let's go to North Carolina, try to sway things there. Can you state your position on the topic of abortion? Okay. Ooh, this is going to be a controversial one. Um, let's focus on the economy and health care. Yeah, let's do that. We're going to stay away from that one. Didn't really help us a whole lot, though. Still got seven ones to go here. Another issue important to the Christian right comes in the form of gay marriage. Many states have already passed referendums banning the practice, as well as being seen as a key reason as to many Republicans winning in recent times. Um, I think I'm going to go states' rights on this issue. Federal government should have no responsibility on it. We'll do that. Evangelicals are a bit deflated, but this was a fine answer for most voters and shouldn't cause much harm. All right. I think that solidified us some in the South, but... Ohio may be out of reach. We're going to need Ohio, North Carolina, Virginia, probably all three of them in order to win. RFK all the way. Was it hard to get 378,000 subscribers? Absolutely. It is not easy to do. And it's hard as well to keep them. One thing I will point out, that subscriber number can be a little deceiving. Uh, my views... Like my average views and watch time on the channel are really not much different at nearly 400,000 subscribers than they were at 100,000 subscribers. And I've talked to some other uh, YouTubers that have channels even bigger than mine about this issue, and there's truth to it. People have kind of a quick attention span, so it's very difficult to keep people, right? So there's a lot of turnover that happens in a channel like mine. So on an average day, if I'm gaining, say, 200 new subscribers, what probably actually happened is that I added 300 new subscribers and lost 100 subscribers. And it was a net gain of 200. There's a lot of turnover that happens. And so a lot of people who maybe watched the channel a ton a year or two ago aren't still watching now. So that's why I'm especially appreciative of folks that are still around from the beginning because I know how hard it is to keep people interested for that long. So, um, so yeah, it, it can be deceiving uh, having numbers like that because it still takes a lot of work uh, to grow and keep a, keep an audience. So, uh, Matt, why I'm feeling cautiously optimistic about West Brom's new season. Rough start today, but I think they're going to be okay as long as they can stay healthy. So, uh, Squiddy. This is probably someone you don't want anything to do with, but this is vital if you want your campaign to survive. Regular GOP mega donor Squilliam Fancyson, your high school rival, has been at odds at your campaign. Uh, what can we do to sway over his support? Um, he can kiss my big beauties for all I care. We will win without his support. Do nothing. Squilliam decides to sit the campaign out. Many of your advisors see this as a missed opportunity. Ah, darn it. Probably should have gone after it because now I'm down big time. I am not, I'm, I'm independent, American nerd. I am conservative, but independent. Brazil's got great history, Miguel. I'd love to get into some more of their history at some point. Being a West Brom fan is stress. Cameron, you are absolutely right. I am 100% committed to the idea, though, that I am going to get to the Hawthorns for a game at some point this season. Um, Nathaniel Davis, then as a, as a subscriber, you got everyday life things. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I totally understand that I make daily content. And not everybody has time to watch every single day, and not everybody's interested in every single topic that I cover. That's totally okay. Um, some person, if you look in the link in the description of all of my videos, you'll see the link to VTH Extra. I did a whole video on how I became a West Brom fan. Check it out. It's a lot easier than me explaining it. Uh, vice presidential debate roll around the corner and crabs widely expected to flounder. How will you prepare your boss? Um, I, I really don't know how it's going to go. 
Dwayne Johnson with his Hollywood looks and charisma takes the debate, giving Patrick a... Wait, his, his running mate is The Rock? That's awesome. Yeah, I don't think we're going to win this election. Just recently, Russia has been in a lot of controversy after a victorious week or two with Georgia that saw them establish influence over South Ossetia and Abkhazia. What will you do about Russia? We should take action against Russia with Europe by our side. Sanctions. All right. It's going to be close, but we're not going to win it. Just not going to do it. The JFK movie, not a fan. I think, unfortunately, a lot of people think that the stuff that they talk about in there is actually true, and a lot, not, a lot of it's really just flat out made up. Texas left Mexico, two reasons. Number one, slavery. Number two, they wanted to be part of the United States. I would definitely do a vlog from the Hawthorns. I did visit the Hawthorns when I was there in January, but there was no game going on. Um, so you see that in my one v VTH Extra video, um, me visiting the outside of the Hawthorns. All right, considering what happens at the first debate, the second and third debates are coming up. Um, I'm going to prep for the debate and then lead, use them to lead to victory. No matter what you did, SpongeBob was just on his A game for both debates. Ugh. Unreal. Unreal. Can't believe I'm going to lose to him. Your final campaign message. I have to double down on those, those hicks. Um, I really need to go to the Midwest. All right, let's see what happens here. Let's finish this up. Marine biologist Steven Hillenberg is running a writing campaign. Don't talk, don't mention him, but bond with him over our shared love of the arts. You make a good friend out of Steven, so that at least there's that, assuming you lose the election. <sighs> Indiana, Ohio, Pennsylvania. I think that's where we're going to go. All right, I don't think we're going to win. How did they decide who was put on Mount Rushmore? You know, honestly, I'm not sure. Yeah, I think West Brom will at least make the playoffs. I think it's going to be tough for automatic promotion just because you've got the likes of Leeds United and Leicester, uh, some of these really, like, otherwise previously solid teams from the Premier League. I, I agree 100% that immersion is the best method to learning a language. I'm working on German right now. Uh, it's newcampaigntrail.com. Well, we're solidly taking the South. We did lose Ohio. There's really no chance for us to win this election. I actually have had, not had lunch yet, so I'm going to wrap it up after this. Um, new updates coming to Patreon today. Um, so if you've ever wanted to consider joining as a patron, now's a good opportunity for that. Uh, and you'll hear more about that soon. FIFA World Women's World Cup, not a great start for the United States, that's for sure. Going to be interesting to see what happens. Uh, final results. SpongeBob takes 322 electoral votes. It's actually pretty close to how it went for McCain in 2008. So, yeah, I, Lemur Lady just said that. It is very close to the historical one. So... Guys, thank you so much for joining me for my birthday uh, live stream. And I have lived in Ohio most of my life. Thank you to everybody who donated uh, and for those who donated or became new members as well. And uh, we'll see you again real soon. Thanks for watching.